<laughs> uh, my name is uh, Jeff Fiebig. I work for ACH Group. Um, we're currently in a partnership with Flinders University, um, which is very much built around the Tonsley concept about business and uh, government and uh, <coughs> the tertiary sector working together. It's a small project, only about $50 million, um, but it will provide employment to around about 100 people, 100 people in the health and aged care industry. Now, we're not so much worried about um, where, um, I suppose, jobs are being lost as much as how we're going to find workers into the future. Over the next 10 years in South Australia, we're talking about requiring 10,000 people. Around Australia, 2 million people. Now, we don't think that without Flinders University <coughs> and government being involved in that, that we're ever going to achieve the demands that are going to be made on this sector to meet what people are after, which is not about just getting better, it's also about improving their health before they get sick. And so with Flinders, we're actually involved in quite a novel project called VITA, um, adjacent to the RGH, which is very much about changing the uh, parameters of the industry that we're in, um, but working on a partnership between industry and government um, and the tertiary sector, which we see as vital. Brilliant question, and well, it wasn't really a question, it was a statement, I should take it as a comment in some respects, but um, let me throw to Raymond, because there was something that came up there which I can throw to you as a question, and that is the future workforce. Um, it is one of the big issues for a small state like South Australia. You keep putting people through universities or getting your TAFE or whatever, they get skilled up and then they go somewhere else to another state. How do you stop that happening? Uh, uh, by jobs. having innovative <laughs> industries that create opportunity for employment. Uh, therefore, you know, yes, uh, it is about leadership. Uh, I, I don't know, I can't use the image that leadership in its, itself is an innovation. Uh, I, I found that a bit of interesting thought. Uh, it's a pity. <laughs> Uh, I thought leadership was the catalyst of innovation, and that, you know, and we need to get uh, uh, get beyond that. This is, as Khan said, an SME, SME economy, and that's not going to change uh, anytime soon. And that, that's really great because, by definition, there is a tremendous ownership mentality. And I think, uh, but for the kind of innovation that we need for the future, therefore, it is about collaboration and partnerships. Uh, I think skills is an example of a very uh, important role for government and, and programs like you know, Skills for All and so on are critical because small uh, SMEs cannot afford to themselves have uh, you know, training and development departments and therefore they need to uh, access. Uh, the other key in terms of uh, our workforce is uh, we must, as a, as a state, get far more aggressive and innovative in the role of women. And this panel is a bit of a travesty in that regard. Uh, we, we cannot. I, see, I, I did notice that myself. <laughs> but we I, I'm trying to really uh, engage the left side of my brain right now. We, we <laughs> cannot uh, uh, meet the uh, growth standards that we need to meet. Uh, in fact, over the next five years, we're projected to need uh, to add 130,000 people to the workforce. We're not going to do that solely through immigration. Uh, we, we're also going to need to uh, engage uh, more of the current uh, citizenry in the workforce in more creative ways. And I think that the edge of that is in finding ways to engage uh, uh, an increase of participation of women in the workforce and also seniors. And I think it calls for very innovative approaches to things like uh, work cover, it calls for taxation, I think incentives to keep people, you know, I'm about at the retirement age. And yet, uh, you know, I'm projected to live at least another 20 plus years why do I want to sit around and suck my thumb and dribble for the next 20 years? I want to stay engaged. And, uh, uh, and, I think uh, your retirement age is going to be 75 by the time you need to worry about this. No, well, it's not. <laughs> I'm already nearly there. So, but we have to, uh, as businesses, uh, there is a real paradigm shift that I think we need, as leaders, uh, need to, uh, uh, to dare to take on and, uh, and, and transform the way we view the workforce. Okay. We're